Hey, what's going on, guys? We're back with Taylor and Drew from Vitreous, and today we're going to be looking at the energy and why it's so important. What's going on, Drew and Taylor? How are you guys doing today? Pretty good, Thomas. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming back. Glad to be here. Taylor, if we could start, why is V Energy so important for the Vitreous holders? V Energy is the lifeblood of the entire platform. So if we think about other blockchains, we know that Ethereum requires Ethereum to function, right? With no Ethereum, nothing would happen. You cannot participate in consensus. You cannot do transactions. Nothing about a blockchain will be secure without that fundamental throttle that is gas, right? So the security from a blockchain to prevent spamming and those other facets really comes down to the cryptocurrency that's part of it. Now, why would a two token system such as VTRS or V Energy be more secure? That's because VTRS is that overarching scenario that gets you to V Energy that is then used. So really it's, it's it's an evolution. Can I just buy and hold V Energy? You cannot at this time buy V Energy directly. V Energy can only come from VTRS and the staking algorithm. So you can buy VTRS to engage with the consensus, which will then reward you in V Energy and then can then be sold to VTRS, like a step in between. But you cannot buy V Energy itself or hold it on its own. Yeah, and one of the important things to remember is the commodity token VTRS is needed to be staked in order to generate the V energy. So the fact that we require that helps us shore up and stabilize the ecosystem by staking the tokens. Now, when you do stake, they're still in your wallet. You can still see them. You don't have to surrender them, but they're locked in a smart contract, right? So by staking and requiring that action to happen really helps stabilize the entire ecosystem, which is why it's super important. We generate the V energy, not just have it as a, you can just buy an X amount, you know, it needs to be generated and churned, right? V energy can't just be static. If we introduce an ability to hoard V energy or stockpile V energy in relation to the V energy to VTRS returns, somebody who's trying to game the system, which we can go into, then we get into big swings of supply and demand, right? So we've implemented underlying logic to support the continuous churn of V energy to VTRS, which will help keep everything moving and, and allow the system them to really work. So instead of typical staking where you stake and then you get the same tokens back with Vitreous, you're staking and you're getting V energy and then you have to convert that back into Vitreous tokens. Yeah, that's correct. I think at one point we liken this kind of to a liquid staking kind of scenario where you, you can stake your Ethereum and you can commit it and you'll be rewarded with a different kind of scenario. V energy is very connected to VTRS, right? One cannot really function without the other. You can't trade VTRS based on VTRS. You have to trade VTRS from consuming V energy. You can only get V energy from staking VTRS. So the two are really one and the same. It's like a token and a half kind of scenario instead of two tokens. They're, they're so connected that it's impossible for functions to occur without both of them being in play. And Taylor, one V energy isn't equal to one VTRS token, right? So as the economy you know, the supply and demand you were saying, one V energy could be worth 10 VTRS or the opposite could also be true. 10 V energy could be worth one VTRS. How does that relationship ebb and flow over time? What would that look like? So the ebb and flow of V energy to VTRS is based on two big elements. Our staking reward pool, which I've kind of illuminated is, is kind of interesting, is more like staking liquidity in a sense that the VTRS we've set aside for that allocation is the buffer in which we are distributing rewards. We've already baked in this native self-fulfillment based on the V energy portion of it. When somebody wants V energy, but they're not staking. So somebody who doesn't even own VTRS, for example, could need V energy for a future use case. They would have to go buy VTRS, then swap it to V energy to acquire that. That V energy they then commit to acquire this V energy goes into that reward pool for redistribution. So that will adjust the ratio in which the rewards are being paid out based on our algorithm. V energy 
on the demand side is generated from all the activity on Vitreous as a platform. So that's any DeFi activity, that's any smart contract activity, that's anything that's going on on E-Chain or F-Chain. We have a lot of options, right? And so even though we're starting at the ground level with an F-Chain where we're expanding with E-Chain and all the very high velocity stuff that would be involved there, the demand for V energy goes up. V energy comes from VTRS that is staked. So the more stakers in the pool, the more the generation value of the energy gets distributed. There will only ever be so many stakers. We're not going to have 100% of the supply. It's not economically feasible for 100% of the supply to be bought and then held. There's going to be ebb and flow action in some capacity or whatever reason on the VTRS side. So stakers are going to be in this little pool that are responsible for generating all of the functionality of of the chain which is really cool as that reward allocation kind of builds up the baseline rewards that we've kind of geared this all around over the runtime expands more and more and more as people are saying hey here's my vtrs i need more v energy to do xyz so it's more of a dynamic block reward even though block validation isn't part of that so everybody that is staking VTRS must ensure the churn of their V energy to comply with kind of the rules of churning the system. The V app, right? That's going to show people their balance of their V energy, their VTRS tokens. That V app is how they're going to interact and sell their V energy back to the broker, right? Yeah, 100%. So the V app is where you go for everything right and working on making something kind of really cool with the v app where he kind of feels different right it feels powerful that v energy will be felt by the user like oh what's happening i need to do something you'll really be able to tell when you go into v app whether there's action to be taken and if this action's ideal or not will there be a way to alert people using the VIP, hey, you reached your max or set up custom alerts like, hey, you told me to tell you at 50% uh, notification or whatever. That would be a great way for people to stay engaged and not forget and stall out. Is that something we're thinking about doing? Yeah. So push notifications are already involved in uh, the V app. You can have some, you have, there's baseline kind of, I want, you know, to be notified X, Y, Z, and then Custom fields are possible. That'll come in when the collaborative staking marketplace is ready and uh, everybody can get engaged there. Yeah. Do I need to have my own Vino to earn V energy? You do not. So you can participate through the collaborative staking marketplace in collaborative staking. So a V node owner will be able to go into the V node collaborative staking marketplace and basically launch a smart contract that'll let anybody else with VTRS enter and stake so that those individual users that don't own a V node can participate in supporting the network and earning V energy. So if there's high demand for V energy, then you get more features back if there's high demand or is that not understanding it correctly if i am somebody with v energy and the system is saying hey we really need v energy because so many people are buying it you will actually get a higher rate of return through the broker based on selling at that point in time now when you sell it's going to readjust the demand ratio based on how much you sold whatever so there's actually a consideration for a range of low demand you know normal demand high demand extra high demand extreme demand and all of that and there's extra gains to be had by somebody who's very closely paying attention versus somebody who's trying to be as hands-off as possible so by being engaged, you can actually earn more than baseline rewards, in theory. Can you explain the difference between someone who's only staking and someone who's running a V node? So by running a V node, you're classified as a solo operator. A solo operator is a guy such as myself. I have a V node. I bought it off of, from the website. Now I have my V node. I plugged it in to the wall. It's got power. I connected it to the internet and I've bound it to my wallet. Now I've committed my VTRS to it. That's all I have to worry about, right? Just me staking with my VTRS on the V node. Now, over time, I generate reputation, the amount of time I've spent connected to the network knowing that the V node is going to do its work, the amount of time I've spent connected to the ne network is going to influence my rewards. So threshold rewards, the reputation rewards, and the uptime rewards are something that's solo operator by default. 
However, if they were to join the collaborative staking environment by putting their V node up and launching a smart contract, there's other factors that come into play, right? Your threshold rewards are going to be higher because you likely have more VTRS based on the total staked pool to influence a higher rate of generation. Proportional, it's, it's bonus proportional to what, what your V node is holding versus the entire amount of VTRS at stake. And another bonus that you get as a CSP operator or a collaborative staking pool operator at this point is the unique user reward. So for every X amount of users that join your node and your terms, your collaborative staking pool, that smart contract is going to generate more. So as the operator, you're subject to baseline rewards. As somebody who's committed their VTRS to this CSP, you're subject to baseline rewards, which is the algorithm that's running for the, based on supply and demand. So that's the default V energy that every VTRS itself on the network is generating at the moment. Now the CSP is taking that value and then being amplified by all the bonuses that come on that V node, right? Or that operator. So the more reputation the V node has by being a good participant in the system, the longer that that V node has been connected to the network, positively supporting it, which is correlated to, but not directly tied to the uptime reward, plus the unique users and the threshold rewards, they all come together to create a nice bonus stack that's going to increase the amount of rewards going into the CSP. Now, as an operator, your terms allow you to dictate a section that of V energy that you yourself are going to claim as an individual. Out of the C CSP, say the CSP generates 100 V energy over the course of whatever. You set your terms to say, I'm taking 10% of this pool no matter what it is, you guys get the rest that operator is getting 10 VTRS. Now the users that are involved, maybe it's one, maybe it's a thousand, they get to split the other 90 proportionally based on what they've committed to the pool. That's the terms everybody agreed to. That's the terms that are going to be set up and that's how it's auto executed by smart contract. And I think it's important to remember, Taylor, that the operator who stakes their VTRS on their own node, yes, they can set their percentage that they get off the top, but that remaining 90% you were talking about, they also get a piece of that 90% proportionally, right? So they're sort of double dipping, but it's also a, a bonus of running your own operation, right? Right, yeah. So you can say that, hey, for my troubles of setting all this up, first off, owning a V node, and then second off for running this CSP being a good option for you guys, I get my baseline rewards, plus I get part of the rewards you helped everybody generate. So that's where the collaborative work come out, right? Working together, we can generate more V energy for the Vitreous platform. Taylor, what are the options that people have with V energy? Are they able to sell it back or trade it? V energy is used for everything across every change, which includes DeFi interactions that everybody's used to on, on chains such as Ethereum or BNB. Say another token launches in power plant. Not that that's a thing, it's a conceptual theory possible. We could see people trading that token with V energy, right? Not that it's liquidity, liquidity is handled a little differently and there's a lot of stuff to be considered there, but V energy is the fundamental value of transacting or interacting on Vitreous, including power plants. So any DeFi interactions, any product interactions, it's even possible for people to use comply queue through V app. Maybe that costs some V energy. There is several different options that we are currently working on outside of our initial delivery that will utilize V energy in different ways. So V energy's potential isn't just limited to uptake of DeFi tokens launching on power plant. It's not just limited to the amount of businesses we bring into Vitreous. It's limited to the amount of products we launch, the amount of businesses we come on, the amount of DeFi activity we see. So adoption in multiple fronts does drive V energy, but it isn't just limited to to businesses that we need to feed. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you guys have any more questions for Drew or Taylor, you guys can join from the Discord link down below, and I'll leave a link to the pre-sale and the website in the description. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.